Hello everybody! I hope you are having a fantastic day. I am in the middle of restoring an Amiga 2000, which is one of the bigger box Amigas. And uh, it was an expensive machine then, and it is a crazy expensive machine now. And uh, one thing you find if you ever go looking for Amiga parts is that they are crazy expensive. As in, like, a replacement keyboard for that thing is 200 bucks. So, I mean, it is, they're stupid expensive. Um, one thing that is not stupid expensive on the Amiga is this. And uh, the Amiga's had this weird 23-pin video output. And so they made this adapter to, uh, to do audio in, video out, and RF out. And uh, you can pick these up all day on eBay for, like, 25 bucks. And they're designed to give you color RCA out. The reason why they are so cheap is because they are absolute garbage. I mean, they're garbage for a couple of reasons. One is, you know, having this thing uh, attached to the back of the computer is just kind of weird, something that sticks out this big. Um, maybe we should tear it down one day. Um, but anyway, having this thing sticking out the back of the computer is bad, and then it also just gives really fuzzy garbage um, composite output. And so we're going to rectify that with a project that you've actually seen before on the channel and it's called the RGB to HDMI. This is a random one. I built a bunch of these boards in a toaster um, in a previous video. This one's still covered in flux. I, this isn't one that I use. Um, but as you can see on here, this version of it has a couple of resistor arrays and it has a header and there's a few passive components around the outside of this. But the star of the show is this Xilinx CPLD. And a CPLD is kind of a, a cousin to an FPGA. It's a chip that can be programmed and configured however you want it to do some really cool things. And they've designed it to do some really cool things. So the idea of it is, and it's going to be basically the same thing on the new one, you mount it on top of a Raspberry Pi Zero, if you can get your hands on one, and um, you will use the HDMI from the Pi as your video output. And then on this connector here, you make up whatever kind of custom cable you want. So if you're using uh, CGA from an old IBM, you'll make up a nine pin cable that connects to this and connect that to the CGA port. And it's a little awkward, but it's a very amazing project because those old monitors are dying fast. So, for example, on something like, uh, you know, an IBM, if you wanted the original IBM CGA monitor, I mean, they go for 250, 300 bucks. They weigh a lot. They take up a lot of space. They're not super reliable. And you know, they're dying every day. But so the idea with this is that you can actually save these things. You can use your old computers on a more modern monitor and get a better picture than you ever would have gotten on the old one. So this is very similar. Um, as you can see on this one, and, and the reason why I'm, I'm going to go over this together is because I already have a video on some of this stuff. So I'll link you to that video. Um, but as you can see, we've got the same CPLD with other components around it. But this one doesn't actually need the resistor networks and stuff. So it's, um, you've got three capacity capacitors and two resistors and uh, the Raspberry Pi will just sit right on top over here like this and then where this one has these little push buttons on it I'm gonna mount some 90 degree push buttons because this is actually a slot that goes to the back of the computer and of course this project is sponsored by PCBWay but I don't want to talk about this just like a commercial I want to tell you that honestly PCBWay has been able to really fuel my passion for tinkering with these old computers and stuff like that you know parts like this are crazy expensive but when I buy this from PCBWay you know you can get 10 of these boards for 15 bucks delivered and these CPLDs wind up being like three four five dollars a piece off AliExpress you know a couple little passives here and you can build this board for about ten dollars and uh good luck finding them on ebay for anywhere near that so you know the fact that i can build these boards and uh for one thing for them sponsoring the channel but even if i was building them on my own for myself which i do um the ability to go to pcb way and get pcbs to make your old computers do things that they never could before and to just keep these machines alive is absolutely amazing. The story of this Amiga 2000 is that they had a battery in them that leaked in just the absolute worst spot and would absolutely destroy the machine. It wasn't uncommon for computers of that era to have batteries in them, but those would just absolutely wreck the machines and make them extremely unreliable. And I was able to save this one before the battery leaked. And that makes these computers very rare and very worth saving. And PCBWay helps me not only save them, but keep them usable. One of the other things PCBWay sent me, which is just really awesome, is this ginormous 
um, stencil. And so we'll, we'll be using this a little bit in the video. Um, I've already obviously made this board. Uh, but yeah, so we've got the stencil here and you can put the board in and drop your solder uh, paste right on there and all that kind of stuff. So just very, very cool. And I want to thank them for sponsoring this video. All right, so I've got the card out of the toaster oven. Uh, I soldered some headers on here and um, added these 90 degree buttons to allow me to do some stuff with the software. And I think I can program this thing without actually having it hooked up to a computer. So I'm gonna take the um, Pi and I've got a micro SD card here that has the software on it. It's just a thing where you copy it over to a FAT32 partition. You don't actually have to burn the image or anything like that. We're gonna hook up the mini HDMI and then I'm going to power up the device. And if it works, I should be able to, if it's like my other ones, uh, go through here with these buttons and program the CPLD uh, with the software. All right, so this is the big box Amiga and I'm in the middle of doing a whole bunch of things with this thing. We've actually got something in here called a Pi Storm. So this is not the first Raspberry Pi to find its way in this machine. This isn't necessary. This is something I'm just playing with. So um, I'm not sure if this is gonna have any effect on the other one but the cpu is actually out of this machine at the moment and then on the back if you look here we've got this video out which is that 23 pin port which we're not going to be using and then over here we've got mono video and audio out so what we're actually going to be doing is using this slot in the back over here which is for another video card or any kind of like flicker fixer or all kinds of other weird things that they made for the amiga so this thing tells us that if you can read this side, uh, it's backwards and that's because it's going to go in this slot right here up against the power supply and then we're going to have the buttons and the HDMI pointing toward the back. So uh, we're going to put this bad boy in here. Now this is the first time I fired this up so I don't know what to expect. Now I will say the Pi Storm that I put over here uh, will affect the video. So I'm going to have to go in there and start a game and then hopefully if everything works it'll come up on the HDMI. Okay, this setup is wild enough that I feel like it's worth just uh, breaking the second wall and the third wall and showing you guys what all is over my desk. So we've got the Amiga 2000 down here. We've got the Pi Storm in it and the CPU is actually out of it. It's sitting right here. And so um, we've got this thing emulating the CPU. Now there's an HDMI cable coming out of here and that's running up to this TV here, which is the basically showing me what the virtual CPU is doing. It's got a full operating system, it's wild. Over here, I don't know if anything's gonna show up on this, but we've got this TV has the uh, wire to the mono video out RCA port that I showed you. Here is what I'm seeing through the camera. And over here, we have one of my monitors uh, hooked up to the pluggable thing capturing video and so we've got this whole setup here and then finally over here we have the rgb to hdmi which is going over there to that capture device this is the board we just built that hopefully will give me a lot better video so uh i'm going to turn this thing on and we're going to see what happens i'm actually going to keep the camera in my hand because i do want to show you we're not going to go over the whole thing but i do want to show you the virtual cpu okay so coming up over here yep okay so that's the pi storm we're booting into something called caffeine os which is sort of like a a controlling os for the cpu so as that boots the screen down here flickered a little bit um and as you can see we have uh stuff like we can actually run some software on the cpu directly the uh that one is still, <laughs> sorry for the camera work, this one is still black, but now this one with the RGB to HDMI turned gray. So I'm going to start capturing and we're just going to see what happens. So this Caffeine OS is sort of an easy button operating system for the CPU itself. And it's going to allow us to just force some stuff onto the CPU. It's, it's a weird concept that I don't even fully understand yet. Um, but we're going to click on just the first game that comes up here. Coco Banana sounds great. And uh, I'm going to try the AG. I don't know what the difference is. Oh, I don't have that board. So I guess I'm going to try this one. ECS, whatever that is. Okay, so we've got some flickering going on on the TV. And it's loading in black and white. And then I've got the RGB to HDMI is coming up. 
So the quality does not actually look awesome on that. Um, and I don't really know if that's the Pi Store or not, but you'll see there's some flickering kind of going on. And uh, to be honest, I'm real early into this project to know if that's coming from the Pi Storm, if there's a problem with the RGB to HDMI, if there's a problem with the computer itself, um, maybe the, the raw RGB outputs on the thing. But um, it's not perfect and I want it to be perfect. So I was just about to give up on this video when I decided to file an issue on the GitHub repo and Linux Jedi is awesome. Uh, the person who designed this board and responded within just a couple of hours and said that it looks like I hadn't done the auto calibration. That message goes by so quickly when you first turn the thing on, I just didn't notice it. And so um, I'm about to try this for the first time. I'm gonna hit this button here and I'm actually having a hard time seeing from where I'm at but there should be some kind of auto calibration thing nope uh, auto calibrate video sampling let's try that oh <laughs> look at that oh my goodness that is exactly what i was looking for that is fantastic that is basically a pixel perfect representation of what this thing should look like look at that that is awesome so hey I want to thank Linux Jedi for making this board and providing the support. I want to thank PCBWay for sponsoring this video. I'll have a link to get some of these boards or even an updated version of this board. Um, and man, I am excited to see what I can do with this thing.